to tuning in. Since it was raining outside all weekend, Dan got the time to work on the Chevelle, replacing the heating controls so we can have heat this winter. Hey Dan, run that intro! Hey Gearheads, thanks for tuning in. I did have plans to clean out the trunk of the Camaro today, and also keep working on the trailer, but it's raining. So, that gives us an opportunity to get back on the Chevelle and do something I've been meaning to do for a while. The fan control arm is broken on the heater controls, so I got another set to put in here. So we're going to show you how to take one out and put one back in. Let's get to it. So this is the replacement set that I got. It's just out of another car. Uh, Terry hooked me up with it. Thanks, Terry. So what I'm going to do, and I'll show you, this arm is broken on the one I have. I do need to replace the switch, uh, take it off the old one, and put it on this one. But before I put this in, I want to go ahead and lubricate all these uh, moving points and also inside these cables. Um, these cables need to be nice and straight or else this isn't going to work. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lubricate all this. And then we'll go ahead and take the other one out and uh, we'll swap over what we need to. So like I said, I'm just going to spray a little silicone in here. Silicone is going to be better than any of the, um, the other lubricants because this will kind of stick in there and hold on a little bit better. And then you can also do the ends of the cables and then kind of work them back and forth. And it's best when you're doing these to try and stand it upright and kind of spray down into where the cable runs and then kind of work it back and forth and uh, if it falls out the other side that's fine it'll carry any dirt or dust or anything that's in there in the way with it and it should give you good operation so you just want to spray it in and then just kind of work it there you go after you spray it in you just want to work it back and forth and that'll help clean out any dirt that's in there so I have one of these reproduction uh, assembly instructions for 66 Chevelle and El Camino. Um, this has all the information you need in it. This first page shows you how all the cables go in, the fasteners you need to put them in, and how the switch and everything gets mounted. And then the next page shows you the routing of the cables, how they need to swirl around, and how they get attached to the uh, other ends. So you have the one here, one here, and one here. And you do need to make sure that they're all going the right direction. You can see where this one goes over that one and under that one. This routing is all very important because you do have that cable inside here, the solid cable that has to go back and forth. That's why these levers get broken because a lot of people probably route it the wrong way or don't give it the right uh, circle around here. And then if it binds at all, it's gonna end up bending that wire and um, breaking that top lever. And I'll show you that when we get the old one out. That's what happened. This also shows you how it goes together at the, uh, the heater box for the vent and the defroster vent and the little caps that go on the end. So we'll show you those in a minute. All right, so the first thing inside the car that we need to do to get this old one out is I need to disconnect the other ends of the cables that go to the heater box. It's a little hard to see, so I'll go ahead and just do that, and then we'll come back to this. There's just two screws underneath. If they're original, there should be button head flat screws. Um, I have a bolt here because this one got a little messed up, but we'll go ahead and get this unit removed. We'll take the three cables off the other ends, and then we'll take these out, and I'll show you how to pull this unit out. So this is the one that's above the gas pedal. You can see it's a quarter inch bolt in here. And then the other end where the um, wire goes on, it should have a little press on cap. This one doesn't even have it. So I'm definitely gonna replace those when uh, I put it back together. Oh, and you don't wanna lose that. And then once you do get the caps off, these will just slide off and come off if you don't have the caps on them. Down in front of the uh, transmission hump in front of the shifter, if you have a floor shifter. And then the next one you wanna get to is up in there in the back. Just wanted to show you this clip is actually the style that you uh, kinda use on the doors, inside the doors. It has to flip around and then it will release. All right, I can't shoot that and take it off, but it's this style like the door lock. So this has to come off of that, the clip, and then it'll pop off. Now, unfortunately, the easiest access to this third one is to remove the glove box door and the glove box liner. The door will come off with the three screws down here, or bolts or nuts or whatever you end up having. Um, and then there's two screws each on the side and two up here. And then your liner will basically, depending on if it's been replaced or it's original, should just kind of slide out and you just kind of work it very gently and it'll drop out just like that. 
This also gives you a good opportunity to clean out your glove box, make sure you got your fire extinguisher in there, your uh, registration papers or license plate or whatever. If you have a, a 1966 plate on the back like I do, you need to keep the original plate in the car, so it helps to keep that in here. Some sunscreen for those car shows, and maybe your uh, coin, your 66-67 Chevelle coin. If you don't have one of those, you should look down in the comments. I'll let you know how to get one. Uh, other than that, let's move on. With the glove box door off, you can see if we look in there, You'll see the bolt is on the left and the wire is on the right. If you don't have a cap on it, it'll just come off. And then once you get all those cables off, or before if you like, you will need to disconnect the switch wiring, which is just this plug that comes off the back, and that'll stay with the car. As I said, underneath you should have two of these flat head button screws, unless something is different. This one, I had to drill out the other one that had a bolt in it, but this is what I believe was stock. So you just unscrew these two, and with all those Cable's undone, we're just going to get it out through the back of the dash. Now I know my lights are on the other side, but it's probably easier for you to see from the passenger side how this comes out. Now I don't have a radio, so it's a little easier to kind of get this out, but you just want to watch all your wires, and it should drop down. There's only one more thing we have to worry about on this side, and that's going to be the light, which is going to be over here on this side. That should just pop out. And let's go to the bench. Okay, so now that we got this unit out, we want to lay them next to each other. You always want to double check, make sure everything looks the same if you're replacing a part. Um, you can see that this one has a huge kind of kink in it. So this probably was not put in correctly with the, uh, the loop that it's supposed to have to make sure the operation stays smooth. Um, but that's not the one that broke, it's this one. So let's take a look at that. So you can see that this one has a little bend in it. That's probably because something uh, caught it on the other side and wouldn't allow the wire to go in, so it kinked here. And then you can see this one up here is the one that controls the fan switch, which is here, but it's this side that actually broke off. And again, these are cast from the factory, and a lot of these have a tendency to break if they have any bit of resistance. You can see this one's got a little kink in it as well, so that's definitely uh, not good. These probably were not lubricated, so who knows what's going on with this. But we're going to go ahead and pull this switch off, and then we're just going to go ahead and swap this unit out for that unit. But I want to show you one more thing. We need to remove this switch and transfer it over. So we can see under here, it does have this uh, little tab, so we're going to have to pull that locking tab off. And then we have the two bolts down here, so we'll take those off. And do this just by wiggling that back and forth. Same as you did to get the caps off of the wires on the ends. And then these are just quarter inch nut driver makes it real easy to get it off. I just gotta wiggle this on out. Now I'm definitely gonna clean this sucker up. Um, you may want to test it, make sure it's moving, make sure your uh, you pin out to make sure that the switch is operational. I know this works, so I'm just going to go ahead and clean it up and then we'll go ahead and install it on the uh, replacement unit. And we'll go ahead and install the switch in the other unit. Of course, if it has a switch and you're going to use it, then you can skip this step. We'll get these screws started by hand, of course. And then we'll tighten these up. Now, once you get the switch in here on the right pin, there is a special washer that you can see has a, a spot for it. So we're gonna put this down like this. That's gonna keep it centered in here and make sure that it's gonna operate correctly. So you wanna put that washer on with the little part down. On these lock washers, you can put them in a vise and kind of squish them and flatten them out a little bit. That'll help them grab better. And then, of course, you want to move it back and forth a little bit to make sure that it's not going to fall apart when you have it in the car. But that's the way it should fit, so it's nice and tight. You might want to just clean this up, make sure it's nice and uh, free for it to move. Maybe even grease it a little bit. That's not... The next thing we want to do, because this is a unit we have not used before, is we want to go ahead and make sure the threads are going to be good. And if they're not, we want to go ahead and chase them. So if this goes in okay... And we know we're going to be fine. Usually you could just chase them with the correct size. Make sure you have the correct size. And if it goes in okay, then you're in good shape. 
And if you get stuck at all or it seems tight, definitely don't force it. You don't want to break the screw in there, especially if it's original threads. Just chase it with a tap. Since my unit was metal and metal and the new one is plastic and plastic, I'm going to pry these off. Actually, no, I'm going to pry these off first. If I can get these off and they don't break, and I can get this off, there's just a little clips to hold it on, then I'll transfer it over to that one, because um, this I actually replaced, so this is a lot newer than that one. So um, This is supposed to be chrome on the outside, which it was, but it's kind of faded, but I still like the way it looks better than that one. So let's see if we can get this off and reuse them. Now to get these off, we're going to protect the bezel. We're going to use a heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, you can use a hair dryer. And we're going to just heat this up a little bit to try and release the glue. Be aware that this is plastic behind it, so you don't, definitely don't want to uh, put too much heat on that. And then once it's heated up just a little bit, we're going to try to use a screwdriver and just put gentle pressure to kind of pull it off. You can also put vice grips or uh, pliers on here to pull it off. Just be careful not to mar them. And especially if yours are plastic and you're taking them off, you want to take extra steps to make sure you're not damaging them. Maybe put some tape around it or put tape around your uh, pliers, whatever you're using. The pliers I'm going to use are these uh, Sears Robo Grips. They're from Craftsman. And they actually came with these little rubber tips that you can put on there. So that way you can grab something, you're not going to mar it up, and uh, it also gives you a, bit, a little bit better grip on it with the plastic being on there, so you can uh, tug on it. So, good idea to use something like that if you can. Alright, let's heat this up just a little bit. Again, you want to make sure you're nowhere near this black. You want to keep checking to make sure that you're not messing up anything around here. So we'll just do a little bit like that, not going crazy. Go ahead and grab this, I'll kind of pry again, so you can try wiggling it back and forth also. See if that'll work. They do make these, so if you break them, you shouldn't be in bad shape. Of course your lever's going to move too, but wiggle it just a little bit. Looks like it is coming off. Maybe prying was helping. And there we go. Now when you put these back on, you can put a little dab of silicone or something in there. And while this is off, you can kind of clean it up and make it look a little prettier. So repeat for the other two. Let's put this one to that side and we'll put this one to this side now. We'll use that. See? Once you're comfortable, it'll come off a little bit quicker. So that's nice. I'll just wiggle it back and forth. And look at that, nice and easy. So now there's just this one clip on the top. You got two clips over here on the bottom. So once we take those off, this whole bezel face will come off and the plastic behind it. This one I actually replaced, but it's looking a little cracked up and it really didn't fit well here. Anyway, you can see how it's kind of bowed out from the front, but it does have nice white lettering. And if it comes off in one piece, we're just gonna reuse it. And I'm not gonna do anything with this right now either. These clips, you can just pry them up on the back and they should just pop out. Now keep in mind, um, it is a, it does have a little, it does have a double bend here on the back and a single bend on the front. So you want to make sure you keep this in the front. So we're going to put that just like that so we remember. And I have extra ones from the other side. So we'll flip that over and we'll pop these off. All right, so I don't know if this is in focus or not, but pretend this is the back of the unit. So here's the clip here. So the plastic front is here, and this is the metal back. So I'm going to say the clip goes like this. So it kind of grabs around the front and then clicks down on the back. This is the shorter end that only has one angle. This is the longer end that has two angles. It comes down and then goes back in. So that's the way I'm going to put them on. And I already took the other one off, so we're going to go ahead and pull this off. And we'll set all this aside. And you see this doesn't have a light thing. Mine had a green one. So it does look like that's supposed to be in here. So we're going to replace that. So my original one did have this little uh, cap in here. This one does not, but it does have the two little holes for it. So I'm assuming it's supposed to be in there. So we're going to try to gently push this out and transfer it over to this one. Because I can't find anything in the books because these were put together as assemblies and then sent to the assembly line. So the assembly book that I have does not include 
the sub-assembly of how this goes together, just how the cables go onto it and how it goes in the car. So we'll go ahead and see if we can pop this off and uh, reuse it. If not, we won't. Simple enough. Let's use a knife to trim this down. Or you can use a grinder, I guess, or something a little more manly, but that might do more damage than good. I always try to be gentle with things first and uh, and see where you're at. All right, so we got those off. So we want to use a, use a punch and see if we can tap that out real gently. All right, so we were able to get it out and we still have the pins. So we can go ahead and uh, clean this up. We'll put it on that one. That's the type of stuff you see in restoration work because you need to have this on, but they're never going to see the back of this. So unless they're going to get under your dash, you'll have the correct green outlook on your light, I guess, or whatever this is supposed to be. Instead of having a white light, it'll kind of give it a greenish tint because, I don't know, because that's the way they designed it in the 60s. What do I know, people? What do I know? So I'm just going to gently file around the outside of this, make sure there's not a lip on there. Because if they heated this when they put it in, I'd probably mushroom the whole thing. We want it to fit in there nice and snug. Like I said, we'll put a little dab of glue on there, maybe some crazy glue. Because it is metal to plastic. Or you can use any kind of glue adhesive. You can probably use RTV on there to be fine, but who knows. Feels like it's gonna work. I'm gonna go ahead and use a nice big punch with light tapping so I just get a little bit of pressure on it. And then we'll just go ahead and put a little dab of glue on these two spots to hold it on and make sure it's not going anywhere. This one actually came through, that one didn't, but that's all right. Just put a little dab of glue on each one. Just to make sure, if your car's got an engine and you drive it, it's going to vibrate. So you definitely want to make sure you're doing your due diligence to make sure stuff's not going to fall apart when you're driving around. All right, guys. So I just got the scoop on these from a good friend of mine, Terry. Thank you, who is um, somewhat of uh, an expert. I know he doesn't like that term, but he does a lot of restorations on '66 Chevelles, mostly, sometimes '67. So the deal is, the plastic bezel is what was original in early '66s. Sometime mid-66, they did change to the metal ones. Now, my car was built in June, I believe. So, I guess that's considered mid-year. Um, since they start in, what, October, November, something like that. Um, it might even be later year. But, anyway, that's why mine was metal. So, I'm going to keep the metal one because I like it better. This does need to be repainted black. And this needs to be polished a little bit more. But, I can only do so much today because I want to get the car back together. I am also going to keep the, uh, the metal knobs. And you can see how much uh, difference just a little bit of polishing makes. You know, if you do have time to do a little work on your car when you have stuff like this apart, you can see how nice that one looks. And that one, not so nice. Nice, not so nice. So we're going to clean these up, and then we'll go ahead and put everything back together. Also with these knobs, they were originally chrome, like this one, and you can see the shape of that. And then they changed to black at some point, probably also right before 67. But if you turn them sideways, you can also see these are flat and these are angled. So if you do have these, make sure you're putting them on the right way. If you do have these, clean them up. Look how nice that looks. Ooh. All right, now that we have this glued on, we're going to go ahead and put everything back together. Um, I cleaned this up. You can do a very light silver paint on the bezel of this. That would make it look better. But again, as I said before, or maybe I didn't, I want to get this job done today because this is the only day I have to work on the car. So I'm trying to do everything in one day. Now, remember, all these are angled, so you definitely want to make sure that you get all these on and seated correctly in their positions so you can get it locked together. So we get this. It has to go over this, I believe. So let's, I have to put it on kind of this way first. There it is. So see how that's sitting flush there? set with the back and again we're going to put these clips on with the dual angles towards the front because it kind of wraps around these front tabs and then you, you just push it down like that and then the 
last one goes on here again. Make sure there's no space between the bezel and the housing, and you'll know you have it on the right way, or all the way. And these are pretty close tolerance, so if this is uh, any of these clips are not going on right, then you may not have it seated correctly. Again, watch those angles. So, now that that's done, the last thing we have to do is to press these on, and I think I'm going to use a little dab of glue on there just to make sure they stay on. And if you are using any glue or RTV, make sure it's very little because there's probably real close tolerance in there. And the last thing you want is glue pushing out when you're uh, putting these together. So just a tiny little, I don't even want it to really drip in there. And make sure you get it in the center too so it's not falling all over the sides. Okay, I think it goes without saying that the reinstallation is just the opposite of taking it out. But... I didn't want to leave you guys and end the video there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put it back in the best we can. So I'm going to wrap this light at the top. And uh, you may want to check your bulb while it's out and you have the opportunity. But I know this one works, so we're just going to put it in. And like I said, you want to make sure that you watch how you're routing your cables. But if you put the unit in first, then you can work everything else later. Again, I don't have a radio, so it makes getting in here a little bit easier. And I did find two Phillips head screws that actually fit, so I'm going to do that because this one is not drilled out or tapped like mine, so we'll put these in to get started. That way at least the unit will be in. And the next step is to plug the uh, switch back in on the back. Take a look at your uh, plug and make sure that everything looks okay there. None of the wires are burned. I've had this uh, apart before, so I actually retaped these wires and my hazard flashes in my way. So we'll just plug this in the back. So the short one goes right here. So we'll do that one first so we know we can get our glove box back together. And each time you put one on, you just want to check the operation and make sure it's working okay. And maybe spray a little lubricant in that, so I'll do that now. And with that in, we can go ahead and put our glove box back in. Just watch the wires or the watch the cables that you have in there ready and it does go on the outside of the flange here I usually start with the sides because they're easy to see and kind of get it lined up now obviously these are going in cardboard so just be gentle with them we don't have to over tighten them This does have studs, so that'll get pressed through the liner and the dashboard. Now you may have a little bit of adjustment on your glove box door, so make sure that it's uh, fitting the right way and it has good operation. Then you can go ahead and put your stuff back in. All right, and the final step for me is just putting this bezel back in. I know it's the wrong color, and I don't even have a radio. So that's pretty much it. And I know you're thinking, Dan, you don't have a radio? You put an amp and a subwoofer in your Camry? You don't have a radio on the hot rod? But, like most of you, I like to listen to the engine. I love driving this car with the windows down and just enjoying myself. But, spoiler alert, there will be an episode coming up soon. I'm going to put a radio in this. I'm going to put an amp and a subwoofer. I do have six my nines in the back. I got a couple speakers on the front. So it should make for more enjoyable cruising. I also got that uh, 700 R4 tranny coming, the four speed, so I'll be able to drive on the highway. Maybe take a little bit longer trips in this thing. So as you can see, it doesn't really look much different on the outside because we didn't really do the work on the outside. But when it comes time for this fan to go on, either give us some heat or, well, it's pretty much all it does is give heat. There's no AC. So when it comes to the winter time and it's getting a little chilly, I can turn the heat on and we'll at least get something out of that. So. Hopefully, if you have a car like this and you wanted to do this job, this will help you uh, learn something, show you how to do it. And if you're just a fan watching Dan's Garage NC, we thank you for watching. Check out some of these other videos. Make sure to look in the description down below. Check out some of my friends' channels. We're all part of a community, not competition uh, group. And we all support each other's channels. So I got to 1,000. Let's get all them that are under 1,000 up to 1,000. So like, share, subscribe, hit that thumbs up, and stay positive and keep on wrenching.